back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Got another mail call. Uh, I've got a box here. You can see it has a customs declaration on it, which means that this came from outside the United States. Sorry to all my UK uh, viewers. I am picking in your backyard. Um, so this package came to me all the way from the UK. And uh, this was part of uh, an online purchase online group through a Facebook page, a new Facebook group to me. Um, it's a vintage toy group. And so this particular seller had uh, several listings and extremely reasonable prices. I don't think I paid more than uh, one or two pounds a piece for each one of these cars. So that's somewhere between two and three dollars US for most of them. And uh, these look to be packaged really, really well. All right, so up first, we got a couple of the Matchbox Lesney bulldozers. So these were in a two part lot, and I think I paid two pounds for these. Uh, this one is a newer model. You can see a description here on the bottom. It's missing the treads and this has been overpainted. It's been overpainted to the original colors that it would have been. So red over red, yellow over yellow. Um, if I get in there real close, you can see there's a slight shade variation between the original red and the overpaint red. But uh, again, at around a dollar, buck twenty-five, something like that, with the conversion rate, that was worth picking up. And then this particular model, I do not yet have. Um, and these, typically when they come up, are fairly expensive. This one's not in great shape. Um, you can see with the variation, it does not have the gap above the engine. Um, but uh, overall, it, this is you know fairly complete. It doesn't have a lot of damage. There's a slight bend in that piece there. And, uh, of course, missing the tracks like all of them are. Um, this one may be a candidate for restoration. Right now, this is the only one I have. And that's kind of one of my rules. If it's the only one, then I don't restore it. I, I want to have at least one original in my collection. These things are also kind of a pain in the butt to get the uh, replacement tracks on because with the bars and everything on the outside, the only way to do that is actually to remove the axles and remove the blade piece so that you can install the treads and then put everything back together. So for right now, I think this one's gonna stay just how it is in my collection. If I come across a better one um, or a worse one at some point in time, uh, I'll go ahead and do a restoration on one of these models. Next, I've got another uh, much older model, and I picked up two or three of these recently. Um, I wasn't really interested in this one because it is broken, the, uh, the little bars on the front here, and it's missing the horse. But these are a fairly uh, desirable model. Um, this is one of the earlier ones because, as you can see, it's got, um, let's see, one, two, three, four eight spokes and it has the gap in the spokes on the wheel. Um, really not in great shape, but again, this was part of a, a larger lot and it had some other things in there that I was after. And this is one of those things. So this, oh, I, that's not correct. This is one, this is, this is the piece that I was really after um, in that job lot or that, that larger grouping of these. Um, so this is a very early cement mixer. Uh, I kind of showed you a preview of one of these in my Blue Box Toys video. Um, and I said at the time that I didn't have the exact cement mixer. This is the one that matches the Blue Box copy. Um, again, not in, uh, not in great shape. It's, uh, it is original. It's got some heavy play wear on this. And of course, has the damage of the um, barrel coming off of the post on the back here. And I believe that that's actually a, a pretty common thing. Um, it's not an easy repair to make just because this post is so small. Um, I have seen other restorers successfully do that where they will drill and tap this post in, uh, in an effort to be able to 
put a screw in the end there and reattach this. Um, but I think most of the M2 screws I have, the threaded screw is probably about the same diameter, same size as that post. So uh, for now, and since this is the only one of these I have, um, I think this is gonna go into the collection just how it is. This piece here, uh, I believe, is a dump truck. And I, I don't, I couldn't find any markings on this. Um, I think the only thing it says is England in the, the top. There's uh, one more model like that in here. Um, it has the dump intact in the back. So again, oh, this one here says Lesney England. Yeah. So I was right. I think these are, yeah, I think these are the same. Look like it. So one original and one maybe for a restoration or custom. Um, so good pieces. I believe these are pretty early. So nice to add those to the collection. Next, another metal wheel model. Uh, this is the Hillman Minx by Lesney. Uh, this is an overpaint. You can see kind of some of the bubbling down here. Um, I've got a few of these and I've got some in, in much better shape than this. Uh, I'm really puzzled as to what the original color on this might be because when I look on the inside, it looks like there's kind of a, a brownish, which I believe would have been original to the Hillman Minx. But then there's also a lot of places where there's this sort of gold yellow. So I think that there very well could be more than one layer of overpaint on this model. Not really sure, um, but this will definitely be a restoration at some point in the future. I uh, might see if I can remove that overpaint and expose whatever that original color was underneath. Um, so a nice little challenging piece. A lot of times when I see these, I don't, a lot of collectors will shy away from overpaints, um, and I don't. Uh, I, I really look at that as kind of an opportunity to pick up something that might be harder to find um, or a more expensive or more rare piece that I can get at a much better price uh, simply because of the condition. So, good little find there. This one is another piece uh, that was part of that larger job lot and one of the reasons that I went ahead and purchased it. Um, I've done a couple of restorations on this model. Uh, there's another one that I had that was a yellow, which is uh, one of the earlier copies of this model. Uh, and this one is really rough. You can see the the rust on the axles here, I, I'm not even sure. Yeah, these rear wheels don't even want to turn. I think the, the rust has completely seized all of that up. On the front here, the little tab that holds that axle in is completely broken and missing. So um, this will definitely be a restoration. Uh, I've got several of these that are original that are in pretty remarkable shape. Um, and so this will be a, a fun, challenging little resto. Uh, it also looks like, see the front there, see there's a little fender on this side, and it looks like it's broken off on this side. So that might be a, a real challenge to see what we can do with this one, but definitely a good candidate for restoration because uh, I'm not, there's nothing really left <laughs> to worry about damaging um, on this one. So good little piece. And I think the job lot, I believe it was, all of these models and I think I gave like five pounds for it um, so about a pound a piece dollar dollar 25 each um, so not a bad buy for for what those are got a I believe this is a Jaguar yes Jaguar XK 140 another hard to find Lesney model um, this one would be a great restoration candidate, obviously, because most of the original paint is already gone. I wouldn't even have to strip it. Um, the wheels and tires on this are not in great shape. You can see these are uh, gray plastic, and it looks like, this one here, it looks like that's cracked. 
all the way through. Um, on these front ones, there's quite a bit of, I don't know if it's overpaint or corrosion or something that has gotten in there and kind of melted that plastic. I'm not sure if those will clean up or not. This wheel here is cracked as well. Um, so I think out of all these wheels, I might have two, no, that one's cracked as well. I might have one good wheel in this. Um, so this one, you know, it, it, it already needs three new wheels. Uh, so I, I don't feel bad about doing a restoration on a model like this. And usually when I can pick these up at a decent price, um, I try to fill a box because I want to have enough uh, models to do future restorations on. Um, just content that I can keep going on the channel. So this one, um, I've got several of these and I am actually in the middle right now of doing some restorations, a, a series restorations on these gas pumps. Um, and I've got a couple of different copies of this, but uh, they're all in various states of disrepair. Some of them are good enough that I would wanna keep them original um, or they had still original decals in place and this one looks definitely far enough gone that I would not feel bad about uh, doing restoration on this. The little guy is intact. You can see he's got his little hat on and not missing his arm or you know none of the little details that you typically find on this casting. Um, busted or broken, this one's all intact, which is great from a restoration standpoint. I can deal with paint, I can fix paint, I can fix uh, decals, um, but it's much harder to fix pieces that are broken, broken or missing. A couple of these other ones here. Uh, another Jaguar. This is the uh, the E-Type with the wire wheels, missing a couple tires on there. Um, I've already done a restoration of this one, so uh, I think if I decide to do this one up, I'd probably do it as a custom. Might be kind of fun to do something. Um, I've reached out to a couple of the other uh, restoration channels about uh, doing some competition videos or some collaborative work, and this is one of the models that we've kind of talked about maybe doing uh, something fun with, uh, maybe for Valentine's Day. So um, that was, again, worth picking up. I think I gave a pound or two pounds for, for almost everything in this lot. Another car that I picked up, uh, possibly for a collaboration, is this one. Um, so this is a James Bond 007. Lotus Esprit, uh, and this is a Corgi model. It's definitely later, probably 70, late 70s, early 80s. Um, it's got the plastic base, the plastic wheels, but I just always thought this was kind of a, a cool casting, kind of a cool car from the movie, obviously. Um, it's got the little swim fins on it for when it goes submersible. Um, the only car in the Bond series up until recently that was not an Aston Martin. Um, I know in the, some of the later, more recent films, there was a couple BMWs that slipped in there, but um, kind of important cinematic history and uh, movie cars is another one of the competitions that um, we've discussed doing. So I thought this was cool. Um, I love Bond. I love the film. So I went ahead and picked that one up. I think I gave 50 pence for that. So. Got a Jeep. No, this is a Ford. Yeah, a Ford pickup. Um, usually, when I get the red trucks, it's the, the Jeep uh, Commanders. Uh, the, these little Fords actually are quite a bit harder to find. Um, and when I have come across them, even on eBay or one of those sites, they tend to be pretty expensive. Um, and this is a super fast model so it's got the the later wheels it's got a different base on it and it's missing the plastics on the front um, but i only have i think one of these in the collection that's uh, the earlier regular wheel model and uh, i picked this one up because i thought it might be a good parts truck and again i think i paid 50 pence for something like that 
And the last model in this shipment is something I'm really excited about. Um, some of you know, in some of these later videos, I've started picking up some more of the King Size series uh, vehicles. And this is actually a model that I have already. Um, in fact, I have one that is mint original in box and it's absolutely amazing condition. Uh, picked it up from Jeff Warkel um, on the Vintage Matchbox Live auction group. Uh, but this one, I, I think I gave eight pounds for, um, for the whole complete piece here. And this one may be one that I wanna do a restoration on. Um, so it is heavily play worn, but it's completely intact. It's got, you know, all the little moving pieces on the bottom. It's got all the wheels and tires there. Axles are very bent. Um, it has the original little toe ring, the little plastic toe ring that's always missing. That's intact and uh, in pretty good shape. I think we can clean that up. So these are the kinds of models that I'd like to look for. Um, sort of these little survivors that I might be able to do a restoration on or maybe even a sympathetic restoration, just improve some of the, the flaws in this. But uh, with the tractor and the trailer here, again, all original wheels and tires, everything's complete on it. Um, it's just play worn, you know, and it's supposed to be because if I was a kid and I had this, I'd have been out in mom's garden every day, filling it with rocks and sand, reaching around and dumping it some other location. You know, this, the playability of a toy like this is top of the line. Like this is what every kid wanted. So uh, it's really hard to find these in really good shape because nobody kept these on a shelf. Everybody took them out. These, these were the toys that were definitely played with and played with hard. So all good buys here. Um, I think with shipping from England and everything that I purchased, I was around $60 US on this, 50, 50 some pounds or something like that. Um, so not, not a bad buy on the grouping as, as a total. Um, like I said, I think most of these I picked up for one or two pounds a piece, a couple of them cheaper than that, a couple of them I paid up for. Um, but really, uh, really great lot here. And I uh, have to say thank you to Antonio for um, the deal on this. Uh, if you aren't familiar with his page, uh, it's a Vintage Toys Buy, Sell, and Trade on Facebook. You can look it up. Um, he posts stuff almost every single day. A uh, wide range of corgi, um, husky, dinky, lots of dinky, um, as well as some of the Matchbox Lesney um, and some of the later Hot Wheels. So if you're into die cast and you're looking for decent models um, at some really reasonable prices, uh, check out his Facebook page. Uh, again, it's Vintage Toys by Cell Trade. So that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks for joining me for another mail call here. And uh, check us out next week for another vintage diecast restoration.